In this video, we look at how antimicrobial resistance occurs in bacteria. It is a tale of the good, the bad and the ugly. Let's introduce the characters in the story. In our world, bacteria are everywhere and there are many different types. First, the harmless or even beneficial bacteria. We call these commensals. For example, our intestines are home to many different commensal bacteria and they help keep our digestive system in good health. Then, we have the bad bacteria, otherwise known as pathogens. These bacteria cause harm. For example, salmonella, tuberculosis, leptospirosis, pasteurella pneumonia, the list goes on. Thirdly, we have antibiotic resistant bacteria. These may or may not be pathogens, but they have adapted to survive antibiotics. On with the story. Let's look at a bacteria. In this case, a pathogen. Bacteria multiply incredibly fast and in their billions. Like any reproduction, sometimes genetic faults occur. A mutation. Usually, mutations cause faults which result in failure to thrive. Occasionally, however, a mutation occurs where the bacteria can still live. It is through mutations that antibiotic resistant bacteria first arise. Different bacteria are always in competition with each other. In the presence of antibiotic, antibiotic resistant bacteria have the distinct advantage. They survive and thrive whilst others wither and die. And that is what antibiotic resistance is. Now, in reality, many different bacteria live together. Think of inside a calf's intestine, for example. There will be good bacteria, pathogens, and probably some antibiotic resistant bacteria too. The different bacteria grow and compete. It really is like the Wild West out there, a dog-eat-dog -dog world where only the fittest get to survive. Normally, antibiotic resistant bacteria are not as fit as their competitors and so they are kept in check. But let's turn the tables and change the odds of survival. One sure way to do that is to introduce an antibiotic. Now it is the antibiotic resistant bacteria which have a distinct advantage. Only they survive whilst all the other bacteria are killed off. Not only do they survive but they thrive all of their competitors having been removed. Now what is going on here is just another example of Darwin's theory of evolution, otherwise known as survival of the fittest. Through time, those organisms which are most suited to their environment survive at the expense of others, and changes in the environment are called selection pressure. It took mankind millions of years to evolve, but with bacteria everything happens so much faster. That is because their generation time is around 25 minutes rather than 25 years or so, and also there are so much many more of them. Whenever we use antibiotics we impose a huge selection pressure, further speeding up the evolution of resistant bacteria. There is one last piece to this story. Antibiotic resistance is coded for in strands of genetic material within the bacteria and these are called plasmids. Bacteria can do something that animals can't. They can swap pieces of genetic material, the plasmids, between themselves. So antibiotic resistance can be transferred to our worst pathogens. And this is how we get a so-called antibiotic resistant superbug. These are the disasters waiting to happen, which we must try and avoid. Our worst pathogens developing resistance to a multitude of antibiotics, a deadly cocktail which can harm us all. There are several examples already of important pathogens which are resistant to multiple antibiotics. For example, you have probably heard of MRSA or Methicillin Resistant Staph aureus to give it its full name and this is the most common hospital superbug. There are also ESBL producing E. coli. ESBL stands for Extended Spectrum Beta Lactamase. There are antibiotic resistant strains of TB in humans and, more recently reported, colistin resistant gram negative bacteria such as Klebsiella and E. coli again. Colistin was one of the last antibiotics available against which there was little known resistance in gram negative bacteria. 
That is how antibiotic resistance occurs. Now watch the next video to see how we can reduce the risk of it happening as a result of the way we use antibiotics on dairy farms.